Hi, folks, and welcome to another edition of Communication U. Today's special guest is Eric Warre. Eric is widely considered the world's leading network marketing trainer. He's built sales organizations totaling more than 500,000 distributors in 60 countries. His book, Go Pro, Seven Steps to Becoming a Network Professional, has sold more than 1.5 million copies. Eric, welcome to Communication U. Our class is now in session. It's uh, my pleasure to be here, sir. What is network marketing? Network marketing, it is a distribution model for companies who have products that they want to sell and they don't want to go through traditional distribution. They set up a network of independent distributors who are going to take a good product and move it to the marketplace using word of mouth advertising. That's, that's as simple as I can make it. How did you get into it? I got into it because, frankly, I, I had 18 jobs by the time I was 22 years old. I didn't have a lot of talent or education. I didn't go to college. I started a family and I needed cash flow. And a friend of mine that I respected, who was a millionaire, said, you should maybe check this out. I think I would have a way for us to make some extra money. And I started back in 1988 and, and began a career that continued to this day. How big is this industry? It's about almost 200 billion a year in revenue. Um, all the companies included, 200 billion a year in revenue. The commissions paid out to the, the sales reps and the distributors that are building, helping those companies distribute their products. They, they get paid about $200 million a day worldwide. Okay. One, some of these companies are like Amway, right? Yep. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I guess Avon calling. Uh, sure. People consider that a pyramid. Yeah. Is some, it a pyramid? Because they say it's not the product, it's the distributor. Yeah, yeah, some people think it's too good to be true. And frankly, if I'm honest, that part of that reputation is earned. And I'll tell you why. The average rep out there just can't help themselves. They're so excited about the opportunity that they have. They embellish. They, they exaggerate like crazy. They go nuts. They say that it's easy when it's not easy. It's an entrepreneurial venture. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is tough. They say it's going to be fast. They say the product sells itself. And if all those things were true, the companies wouldn't need the distributors. And then they exaggerate on the product, too. They say the product cures this and it, it's magical that and it sells itself, all that nonsense. And because of that, it sets this crazy expectation in the average person's mind that sounds way too good to be true. And when they get involved, they try it. It doesn't live up to the expectation. They go, ah, I, I, I guess this thing is just whatever. So they get carried away. They get carried away. But when you're, if, if your job is to hire more distributors, mm -hmm. aren't you more interested in the distributor than the soap? No, I mean, here's the thing. Ultimately, the only way anybody gets paid is to move product. They got to move product through that distribution system, right? Now, you're, the second thing that helps is when you grow a network of people doing the same thing, you sell product, you make a high commission. You build a team of people selling the products, you make a lower commission, but on a larger group of people, okay? So the larger group of people does give you leverage, but nothing happens. Nobody gets paid for the act of recruiting a team. They only get paid when the product moves to a consumer. But if I have a thousand distributors, mm -hmm. I don't have to sell anything. Well, you you need to lead by example if you want to lead those team, yeah, lead those true. people, right? So you're going to need to sell something. Network marketing really is a lot of people doing a little bit. You know, people making a few extra dollars, and for those with big dreams and big ambitions, to kind of amp it up. Why do companies choose to go that route? In other words, why, why didn't Amway just make products and put them in stores? I, I think it's so efficient. This method of operation, this method of distribution is so efficient and compared, think about what's online today. All the different um, voices, people who are pounding on you in every direction uh, to try to get your attention, try to get your eyeballs, try to to have you watch their show or listen to whatever it is they're going to say. And everybody's tuning it out. Nobody, it's so fragmented today, nobody's listening. But word of mouth advertising is more powerful than ever. If, if, if I say to you, hey, there's something that I tried and it really worked for me, that's going to work 
Absolutely. A thousand times better than, than 50 ads on the internet. Why do people join these companies? What is the attraction? You know, I, I think, Larry, people are ready today more than any other time in history to be their own boss. Technology is wiping out jobs. Technology is wiping out industries. Uh, the human the human value is going down and down and down as technology goes up and up and up. And people are saying, I don't want to fit in some other system anymore. I want to be my own boss, but they don't know how to do it. Do they have a good product? Do they have enough money? You know, do they have the expertise in order to be able to do it? But if there was a way for a person to start their own business without a lot of risk, and they could flex that entrepreneurial muscle, see if they have the chops, they're interested. So it's making a big difference. People are taking that step. Are you fighting the Amazons of the world, or are you, are you on a parallel line? Well, Amazon is a unique, yeah, as you know, they're taking over the world, right? There's these few companies that are absolutely changing distribution. But what they don't have is word of mouth advertising. They don't have a network of passionate people who believe in the product, sharing it with other people. We provide a really important educational need in the marketplace. We educate people on products that will be valuable to them. Uh, we don't really deal with commodities as much. We just deal with products that are valuable that we can help to inform somebody else about. What communication skills are the most important for the network marketer? Well, communication skills, that's your world, right? Yeah. Um, I, I think in previous decades, my, my mission in, inside of this profession is to raise the standards, is to take this profession, take it to the place where it needs to be, professionalize it, as it were. We talk about GoPro, professionalizing the network marketing field instead of this lottery mentality uh, that's out there. And part of that is, for decades, people were just trying to get somebody. You know, I want to go get them. I'm going to go sign them up. They're like hunting people. Mm -hmm. And people felt hunted, right? But professionals today, they're more in, interested as an ultimate goal of education and understanding. They just want to educate people to the point that they understand what they have. And in order to educate them, you have to communicate with them. You've got to connect with a person. You have to build rapport build a little bit of trust, and through that process, you now have an entry point to educate them. Here's my product. See if there's a fit. See if there's a need. If there is, fantastic. If there's not, wonderful. Can people learn these skills? I, I hope they can. Yeah, I think, I mean, you, you've taught, how many <laughs> millions of people have you taught communication skills? I mean, I, I learned from your one, maybe your first course you ever did. Um, 20 plus years ago. How to talk to anyone, anytime, anywhere. Yes, a Nightingale Conant course. I listen to it all the time. Uh, and one of the big keys I got out of it, I used it for social, build a social media business. I used it for my network marketing business. I used it in everything that I do. And I also had it reinforced by a book I read about Frank Capra, Frank Capra's uh, autobiography. Uh, the name above the title is the book. But the, the, the number one commandment is thou shalt not be boring. Just don't be boring and you're good. Um, you know, and that, you, you use that principle, and I think in communication, if you use that principle, you're gonna be fine. Are you still developing your skills? You know what, I mean, I think today, I'm just hitting the tip of the iceberg as far as potential. I got a good framework. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years, but uh, I'm, I'm world class in my little universe, but I'm still only operating at 10% of my potential. There's so much farther I can go. Don't you have it down? I do, but I will tell you, there's two things that I've realized specifically in the last five years that make me happy. One is growth. If I'm growing, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And two is contribution. If I'm contributing to the lives of somebody else in a positive way, I'm happy. And I have to have both of those things in place. And what growth and improvement of my skills creates for me, beyond cash flow, beyond growing a business, is the ability to influence and contribute to somebody else's life because I upped my game. 
because I upped my abilities, my ability to communicate. You wrote this book, GoPro, Seven Steps to Becoming a Network Marketing Professional. What do you mean by pro? Well, As opposed to amateur? Yeah, pro, you know, we talk about posers, we talk about amateurs, and inside of network marketing for decades, it was filled with pros and amateurs, people trying to get something for nothing, people crossing their fingers and getting involved like a lottery. What I tell them is, you know, look, if you're going to do this, just decide to be a professional. Learn some skills. Give it some time. It's worth it. But it's not going to be easy. Set proper expectations and go out there and show the world that network marketing isn't perfect. But if you have an entrepreneurial bone in your body, it's better. It beats any other entrepreneurial venture for the average person. For There's most no people, question. for most people, is it a side job? Yeah, I think most people start there. Yeah, I mean, that, that's one of its great benefits, is, is people don't have to walk away from their job in order to be able to start this. Like a traditional business, they might have to walk away from their job you to start this. You do this on Thursday nights yeah. and Saturdays. A lot of 5, 10, 15 hours a week. Do a lot of people start to make money right away? Some. Uh, it, it depends on the person. Here, here's one of the fallacies that, that everybody's going to win inside of network marketing. Everybody doesn't win. You know, a, a good chunk of people get involved and don't do anything. And that's true. 90% of real estate agents never never sell a single home. I know. Okay? So most people who buy a book don't read the book. They have it. It's sitting there. They haven't read it. They paid for it. Same thing's true. People get involved in network marketing, and they don't take the next step because the price of entry is so low. For like under $1,000, a person can start a business. You know what it takes to start a real business. Sure. The, when, you get, when you get started, I guess most people call their uncle. Yeah, some do. mother-in-law. Sure. Why, you sell your family first. Sure, right? when sure. You, isn't that logical? Yeah, some of them do. You know, look, here's the thing. That's a starting point for everybody. I deal with, with professionals, high-end professionals in network marketing. I coach a lot of those people around the world. Hundreds and hundreds of people that are my friends that earn over a million dollars a year in network marketing commissions with zero employees, zero office, zero infrastructure. Imagine that kind of cash flow, okay? Now, it didn't start there. You know, it started with a little bit here and a little bit there, and they started to grow it, and they turned it into a profession, and then they went serious with it. But the potential here is just enormous for a person who's hungry. I mean, and if I had to define one characteristic of a successful person in this profession is hunger. you got to really want well, Where do you start? How do you decide who to recruit? All right, family well, outside. Why do you, what, what, all right. every, everybody can start with the family because there's trust there. Right. And, and I recommend a very specific approach, which is very low-key to family and friends. Maybe ask them to support you, try the product out, see if they like it. No long-term commitment. Take the pressure off. Take the business off. Help me. Yeah, just, you know, support my business. It's like I was opening up a restaurant. But I don't need you. Most of the top earners that I, that, that I know, like 5% of the people that they recruited into their business, they knew the day that they joined their network marketing business. The rest they met later. They met them on social media. They met them living their life. They met them at the restaurant. They met them at a cocktail party. Um, so it's a skill set to kind of attract the world educate everybody, and see if there's a fit. You know, if there's this knock about network marketing is these people are so inappropriate. They're passing out business cards at funerals, you know what I mean? They're, <laughs> they're networking at the wedding, and it's just so annoying. Yeah. And everybody's just like, come on, I don't want to be associated with that nonsense. Do you have to love your product? I've seen people succeed without it, but it's such a disconnect, because I don't think you can fool people long term. I mean, if you don't really have an emotional connection with your product, uh, eventually people are going to sense that. And, and I think just building it as the product's an excuse to be able to make money is a problem. Eugene Letterman wrote a book years ago called The Sale Begins When the Customer Says No. Exactly. What do you do when someone says no? The, the, one of my key mentors, uh, his name is Sam Georges, he taught me that all of business is conversation. And if a conversation is happening, your business is alive. If the conversation stops happening, your business is dead. 
so what I teach and what I've done is just keep the conversation going. They say no, we keep the conversation going. We just keep the conversation going. Mm -hmm. My job is just keep it going until they become fully educated and their timing might not be right. They might say no, but their timing might not be right and six months from now if I stay in contact like our friend Harvey McKay would say, stay, find a creative way to stay in touch. If I stay in contact and their clock dial hits high noon and all of a sudden they're open, I'll be standing there ready. Harvey knows everybody's birthday. It's unbelievable. Yeah, I know. What can, can people in network marketing help other people in different forms of sales? Here, here's, the, here's the basics. The, the what can salespeople in other industries learn from the marketer? Yeah, in, in some, what I would, uh, what we deal with is long-term relationship selling, okay? Uh, it's not transactional. Like if somebody's gonna sell somebody a used car, they're done with them. Um, in network marketing, we involve somebody and we stay connected with them and we stay in contact with them. The conversation keeps going. And if more salespeople did that, they stay in communication with their customers or with their, the, their, their, their clients, they're going to have better success versus having it feel super transactional. You know, they only call them when they need them. Yeah. Um, Long-term relationship building, growing of a network is today, it's one of the most valuable things in the world. I've noticed great car dealers do yeah. that. They yeah. keep in touch. Yeah, they just find a way. They send an update. They send yeah. a postcard. They how's the car going? Yeah, how's it? Yeah, exactly. That, but, but they're rare, right? Yeah. Oh, they're, yeah. They're one out of a thousand. How has social media affected your industry? It's really, I will tell you, I was skeptical of it because for 10 years, I've been using social media to expand my reach for 10 you years. You have a since, big online business. Yeah, for, since 2009. And in the early days, everybody who had a product or an opportunity, they were spamming the world. They were just posting obnoxious links and sending un, un, unrequested messages and friending people up and just being obnoxious. Um, but in recent years, last three or four years, people have really cracked the code. They've learned how to be professional. They've learned how to use the platforms. And I will tell you, it's been a revolution because you can now reach your natural prospect audience at scale with a click of a button. You can find them anywhere in the world. You can, whatever you, if you're interested in fitness, you can go find every fitness group in the world and go have a conversation with those people and see if your product might have a need for them or might have a solution for them. Or, or skincare or essential oils or travel or you name it, it doesn't matter. They can find their audience, even if they're living in a tiny little town, they don't know anybody and all their friends and family said, get away from me, I don't, I'm not interested. Do companies help their marketers yeah, yeah, big to show you how to product or sell, sure. how to display it? The, the biggest thing that they do the companies take care of all the products. They take care of the compensation structure, uh, government expansion. They they take it around the world. They they deal with customer service. They deal with compliance. They deal with all different kinds of things that the, the entrepreneur normally would have to do: legal, everything else. All the so all that supports there. Plus, they do events and they provide tools and they provide training, all different kinds of things. The distributor, all they've got to do is sell some product and build a team of other people who are selling some product, and then improve the productivity of that team based upon their leadership. If they're a decent leader, they can get their team to be more productive. And the, the leaders out there that are growing a network marketing business that can use that platform to create a productive team, companies will pay them unlimited dollars. What's the first thing you sold? First thing I sold, water filters. Water filter. In 1988, these little tiny water filters you put on your sink and you yeah. screw them into the faucet. One. You pull a little plug and it would it would come out clear water. Yeah. Now that company had to go through radical transformation. Today they're a nutrition company, but they're uh -huh. a huge company that and they're expanding around the world. They continue to go today. You do a lot of public speaking. I do. I give advice on public speaking. I'll bet you do. It's the most common fear people have when I know. they have to, to speak. I know. And to me, just make it a happening. In other words, if you're nervous, 
Tell them you're nervous. Yeah. They know you're nervous. Be authentic. Yeah. Be authentic. Why is it hard to be authentic? I, yeah, I don't know. I, I've, I've found a way, early, early on in my career, I was very nervous uh, about speaking. I was very nervous about getting up in front of people. Somebody told me the person with the marker makes the money. The person up on stage, they make all the money in network marketing. So I'm like, okay, if that's the case, I got to get up there. Uh, I got to face my fear. got to figure it out. And what I learned is that preparation takes care of everything. If I'm prepared, I'm an introverted person by nature, okay? So if I'm prepared, I'm calm. You don't seem introverted. I know, I, I, but I'm a situational extrovert. I was introverted all morning until we got, and then, until I sat in this chair, and then I decided to be an extrovert. So a shy time. person can be a good networker. Oh, I, there's a lot of introverted people. How many introverted people do you think, do you know that are successful? Oh, I know quite a few. A ton, right? They're not, some of these natural extroverts, I mean, you think they're an extrovert. Yeah, not. yeah, yeah. Ted they can Turner's put it on. Ted introverted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do most newbies get wrong when they're trying to build a business? What's the biggest mistake people make? They set unrealistic expectations. They want, they'll give it three years in a traditional business. But they'll, they don't have a boss in that world. I understand. But they'll, they'll invest 65 grand on average in the United States to start a traditional business. They'll expect it's going to take three years to get payback in that traditional business. And in network marketing, if they're not getting results in 30 days, they're like suicidal. You gotta give it some time. You gotta develop some skills. You gotta learn some stuff here and, and not expect this to be magic beans. You drop into the ground and it's gonna grow up into heaven. Uh, it's gonna take some work. Most people get involved, they expect something for nothing or at least expect to do less work and get more results. Here's what it's gonna give you. This profession is gonna pay you fairly for what you put into it, but it won't limit how much you can put into it and how much you can get out of it. That's the best case scenario for an entrepreneur. Yeah, you, it's limitless. It is. It's as much as your imagination. And I will tell everybody all the time, I, I've been thinking small for 30 years. I get around these you know, people like yourself, people like Harvey McKay, people like Lou Holtz and Richard Branson and Tony Robbins and all these different people are my friends. I realize how small I'm thinking. I'm thinking really, really small. If I thought bigger, man, we could go bigger. And, and that's what most entrepreneurs inside of this profession need to realize. If they think bigger, the, the sky's the limit. How do you find a company that's best for you to represent? Combination of things. Number one, find a product and, or a line of products that you, you can believe in, you get emotionally attached to that you can, can promote with integrity. Where do I search this? You can find those online. You can search the top 100 companies. You can do that. Number two, find a company that's in integrity with you and you feel can stand the test of time because there's a lot of good products out there and companies screw it up because the company's not strong enough. If the company's strong enough, they'll solve the problems. Find a compensation structure that's fair Find a support system inside of that organization that will help you leverage your efforts. And maybe find a timing situation where you're, you're, you've got a pretty decent timing situation, a balance of risk and reward. They've been around long enough, but not, you know, they're not the house that's been for sale for 30 years on, the, on the, you know, the corner of the block that makes you nervous to even look at them. Find a timing situation where you can tell a good story. All right, you're going to be a network marketer. Yeah. First thing you do. First thing you do, in my opinion, is you've got to realize what you got involved with. That's what GoPro did, is it helped people understand that network marketing isn't perfect. It has its challenges, but it's better than any form of entrepreneurship on earth. There is no other form of entrepreneurship for the average person that can beat this. No one can debate me on this subject. No one can beat me on this subject. It is indisputable. It's better. So people need to realize what they're involved in, how powerful it is, how timely it is, how sexy it is today to be an entrepreneur. Then they need to develop some skills. They can't just cross your fingers and hope for the best. You've got to develop some new skills inside of network marketing because skills build confidence. Confidence will create, have you take some more action. More action will give you some more results and you can start moving. Those would be the basic things I would say to an average person to give them the best possible chance to move forward. Just don't be one of these 
boorish amateurs that crosses their fingers, buys a network marketing glorified lottery ticket, goes and talks to three or four people, hoping that those people will sign up and do something. They don't have to do anything. If you were starting all over, would you do it the same way? Yeah. I mean, if, if I was starting over, here's what, I, here's what I would tell you. One is I would get my belief stronger faster. I would, I would believe stronger faster, number one. Number two, I would think bigger. Uh, I would not have these small limiting beliefs at the beginning. If I can go back in time and give me give myself some advice, is to think bigger, kid. You're you're playing too small. I would move faster and I would be stronger. I'd put my shoulders back. I'd put my chest out. I'd put my chin up, and I would just say, "Come on, world, let's go." Um, I did a piece of that, but not to the level. You know, I had success, but not to the level that I think I could. If I did yeah. it again. Great guest. Thanks, man. The book is GoPro, Seven Steps to Becoming a Network Marketing Professional. Thank you, Mr. King. Eric Warre. That's it for this edition of Communication U. I hope you've enjoyed our time together, and I hope you learned something that you'll apply to your life today. You'll never know when you'll find that single spark of insight that makes the difference for you. See you next time, pal. Hey, Network Marketing Pro community. I just finished a fantastic interview with the one and only legendary Mr. Larry King. Larry, thank you again for the interview. My pleasure, you were great. I, uh, I appreciate it so much. And we were talking about GoPro and we're talking about network marketing in general, but communication is such an important aspect to building a successful career as an entrepreneur, build a, a successful career as a network marketing entrepreneur. And Larry has come out with a program called Secrets to Great Communication. He sells it for a lot of money around the world. I asked him as a favor to the Network Marketing Pro community, would he please make this available to you for a limited time? And if possible, could he discount this product? Learning what he's learned over the course of 60 years in communicating and connecting with other human beings in finding out about other people and building rapport instantly, this guy is an absolute pro, and why not take 60 years of wisdom and put it into your business? It just doesn't make sense not to take advantage of that. Now this course, which is actually two courses, normally sells for $660, worth every penny, worth a lot more than that actually. I asked Larry specifically if he would provide that at a discount, he agreed to do that for the Network Marketing Pro community for a limited time for just $197. And he agreed to do that for a very limited time. I don't know how long that's gonna last. I don't know how long he's gonna make it available. But as long as he does, I hope you and your teams take advantage of it and click on the link connected to this video. Get your hands on that course. I've gone through the course. I've used his principles for the last 20 plus years as far as how to build rapport with people quickly. It's an amazing tool. So take advantage of it, click on the link, and I cannot wait to hear the results as you move forward as a better communicator in network marketing.